So this talk is part of an online course on commutative algebra and will be about Nakayama's lemma. So we will start with some examples just to motivate the problem we're going to solve with it. Suppose R is a local ring of analytic functions near a point, say, say near the point naught in the complex numbers, for example. So the maximal ideal, M, is just the functions vanishing at the point zero. And now we see that the intersection of all powers of the maximal ideal is equal to zero because m to the n is equal to the functions vanishing to order n at the origin. And you know that if a power series vanishes to infinite order, then so if an analytic function vanishes to infinite order, then it must actually be zero. Now let's look at the what, what, case where R is the local ring of smooth functions um, uh, near point naught, let's say, in the reals to avoid complications. And again, M is the maximal ideal of functions vanishing at zero. And this time the intersection over M to the N is not equal to zero. And that's because we can have functions vanishing to infinite order at zero, which aren't, which don't vanish near zero. For instance, we can have e to the minus one over x squared for x not equal zero, and naught of x equals zero. And you can see at this function here, all its derivatives at the origin vanish, so it lies inside this ideal. So we have the following problem. Sometimes the intersection of all powers of a maximum ideal is zero, and sometimes it isn't. Um, so we'll just have a third example before discussing this. So here I'm going to take R to be the union of all um, formal power series in um, x to the 1 over n for all, for all integers n greater than or equal to 1. And again, we see the maximal ideal is now going to be the things with constant term 1 sorry, constant term zero. And this time the intersection of M to the N is not zero. In fact, it fails in an even more drastic way because M is actually equal to M squared. Um, because you can, if you've got a power series in X to the one over N, then it's the square of some power series in X to the one over two N. So in fact, the intersection of all maximal ideals, all powers of the maximal ideal is just equal to M itself. And and the intersection of this fails to be naught in an even more drastic way than before. Um, in general, we have a map from it, ring R to its completion, where the completion of R is the inverse limit of R over M, um, R over M squared, R over M cubed, and so on. That means you take an element of each of these rings and make sure the elements are compatible. For example, if you've got the ring of um, um, polynomials over x and you take your ideal m to be the ideal generated by x, then this ring is k, this is kx over um, x squared, this is kx over x cubed and so on. So you can see the inverse limit is just going to be the ring of all formal power series in a polynomial x. So the question is, is this map injective? And if it is, then the formal power series ring is a reasonable approximation of the ring R. And if it isn't, then you've lost a lot of information. And you can see the kernel of this map is just the intersection of all powers of M. So the question as to whether a map from a ring to its completion is injective is the same as this question we've been asking about whether the intersection of all powers is of a maximal ideal is, um, is zero. And our aim is to show that the intersection of M to the N is zero if 
M is a maximal and R is a notarian local ring. And to do this, um, we're going to need two lemmas, one of which is Nakayama's lemma, which we're going to do today, and the other is the Artin Reese lemma, which I'm going to do next lecture. Um, so for the rest of this lecture, I'm just going to be discussing Nakayama's lemma. So Nakayama's lemma says the following. It says that um, if M is a finitely generated, that should be capital M, module over um, a local ring R and with, with maximal ideal M, then M times M equals M implies M is equal to zero. And it's got a really simple proof, and it's a, um, a very useful lemma. It turns up something like half a dozen times in Eisenbud's book in various places. It's tradition at this point to point out that Nakayama wasn't actually the first person to prove Nakayama's lemma. It seems to originally due to Kroll. And furthermore, Nakayama re apparently really disliked having this lemma named after him, but um, the name seems to have stuck, and you can't really do much about it. And the proof is really easy. Suppose M is generated by A1 up to AN. And then um, and we're going to take N minimal. And if N is greater than or equal to 1, then we can put A1 is equal to um, sum of MI AI because M is equal to m times um, m. So here m i is in m, sorry, little m, and a i is in m. Got too many m's here. And this means that 1 minus m 1 times a 1 is equal to sum over i greater than 1 of m i times a i. And we notice this is a unit because in the local ring, one minus anything in the maximum ideal is automatically a unit. So A i, so A1 is a combination of A2 up to A n. Well, this means we can drop A1 from the collection of generators, um, which means that our number of generators wasn't minimal, which is a contradiction. So the number of generators must actually be zero. So this is the end of the proof. Um, that may be why Nakayama didn't like having the lemma named after him, since the proof is kind of almost trivial. It's just a couple of lines long. And I suppose it's a subtle way of insulting someone to name something completely trivial after them. Um, anyway, um, we notice, by the way, that all we need for this to work is that 1 minus anything in this ideal is a unit. So it also works for M being the Jacobson radical of the ring R. So the Jacobson radical is just the intersection of all maximal ideals. And the intersection of all maximal ideals is the property that if you add one to anything in it, the result is a unit. So the same proof goes through. Um, and there's a useful corollary of Nakayama's lemma, which says that um, if M is a finitely generated module over the local ring R, um, and um, M1 up to Mn generate um, um, M over um, m times m, then they generate the whole um, module m. And again, for the proof of this is almost trivial. What we do is we just put n to be m 
divided by the submodule generated by um, m1 up to mn. And then we notice that n is finitely generated because m is. And furthermore, um, n is equal to m times n, as you can easily check from um, this property here. So n is equal to 0. And n equals 0 says that m is generated by m1 up to mn. So that's the end of the proof. Um, by the way, there's a sort of traditional mistake people make here. Um, we say that if m is finitely generated and m over the maximal ideal times m is generated by these, then it's generated by these elements here. Um, it's not true that if m, a module over a local ring, uh, has the property that m1 up to mn generates um, m over m times n, then m1 up to mn generates m. So here we've dropped the condition that m is finitely generated. And if we do this, there are lots of counterexamples. For instance, we could take the ring R to be Z localized at 2, and we could take M to be the rationals. And here the maximal ideal is just the ideal generated by 2. Um, and you can see that M over M times M is in fact 0. So, so this is certainly generated by the empty set of generators, and this one obviously isn't. So we notice that this is, of course, not finitely generated. Um, so I think Lang's algebra book, I think the second edition actually claimed this was true as part of a theorem, but it, it just isn't. Um, so um, we now give an application of um, Nakayama's lemma. So um, we want to say, suppose um, S um, uh, contains R and is integral over it. So suppose um, R contains S are rings and S is integral over R. Now, last time we talked about the geometric meaning of an extension being um, finite or integrally closed, but we didn't quite say what the ge geometric meaning of being integral was. And um, well, here's one possible interpretation. Um, 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 the application we want to show is that the spectrum of S mapping to the spectrum of R is onto. Um, so um, in order to do this, so let's prove this, what we do is we just pick some prime R, some prime P in the spectrum of R. Um, and we want to find a prime of S whose intersection with R is equal to P. And first of all, we can localize at P. This means invert all elements of R not in P. And we do the same in S. We invert all elements of S that are not in P. And, and by doing this, we can assume P is maximal. You remember localizing at a prime is just a way of kind of turning that prime into a maximal ideal. Um, so the next step is we're going to check that PS is not equal to S. Um, well, if PS is equal to S, then we can write one is equal to sum of PI SI for some PI and P. SI in S. And we're going to let M be the subalgebra of S generated by the SI, um, subalgebra over R. Um, then one is contained in um, PM. Um, so PM is equal to M. 
Um, we also notice that M is finitely generated as an R module. I mean, it's obviously finitely generated as an R algebra because we wrote down a finite set of generators. Now we want the stronger condition that's generated as an R module. And this is because um, S is integral over R. And you remember that if you've got an algebra generated by a finite number of integral elements, then it's finitely generated as a module. So this is where we're using the fact that S is integral. So now we've found that S, M is finitely generated and it has this property here. And if we take these two properties, then Nakayama's lemma applies M, that M equals zero, which is a contradiction. So if we assume that if PS is equal to S, then by applying Nakayama's lemma, we get a contradiction. So, so we know PS is not equal to S. Um, and now we can just pick um, a prime um, of S containing the image of P, rather a maximal, I guess we could pick a maximal idea of S rather than a prime. We can do that because P doesn't generate the whole of S. And if we call this Q, then Q intersection R must be equal to P because it can't be the whole of R and P is a maximal ideal in R. So, um, P in the spectrum of R is the image of Q in the spectrum of S. So this shows that the spectrum of S mapping to the spectrum of R is on two. Um, okay, so um, next lecture, we're going to prove the Art and Rees lemma and then combine that with Nakayama's lemma to prove that the intersection of all powers of a maximal ideal in a notarian local ring is zero.